Hello everyone, and welcome to my 2000 subscriber special. In this special, I hope to investigate the primordial forms of KSP. This will be the first time I've actually played in any of these versions of KSP, and also the first time I've played more than one version of KSP in a single episode I've posted to YouTube. And we are starting with, uh, with the version 0.7.3, as you can see there. You can see the opening screen. Uh, no settings. Uh, I was able to uh, do the graphic settings in the default Unity settings that you get when it uh, initially loads. But other than that, uh, it doesn't take anything, and it also didn't read my joystick. So that's sort of a handicap in this one. You can see the original control center here, and uh, the launch tower there. And let's take a look at the vehicle assembly building. Inside, it's quite dimly lit, and you can see the interior. And it gives you a capsule right away, so we, we have that capsule to work with. I should clarify that I'm doing post-commentary here because I couldn't do live commentary without having some ability to set the sound. The lack of sound settings meant that I wouldn't know exactly what the balance between my voice and the game would be, especially when I launched the rockets. You'll notice the parts here do not have numbers. I don't know what the value of thrust or mass are. And so this is sort of very haphazard, so I begin to try it out with sort of the default rocket that I always start with, which uh, is a capsule, a parachute, and the solid rocket booster. And now, one thing you'll notice is as soon as you pull a part away from the main stack, it, it, it sort of uh, disappears. Yeah, you can't just let it hang out off to the side. That isn't a thing yet. Um, other things that aren't a thing? Symmetry. Symmetry is not a thing yet. So. Uh, trying to put fins on is uh, <laughs> it's a little bit tricky, so I decide to not do that. So after getting the parachute on, I notice some other categories, decals and crew like that. I I didn't really understand what that could be about. Also, I wasn't able to separate the parachute into a separate stage. There isn't any way to create a stage on the side there right now. Um, I'll, I'll figure that out eventually, don't worry. But So I, I go with something like this, three canisters of fuel and a rocket. I don't know how powerful the rocket is, there were no numbers, or how much fuel it could possibly carry. I try and get the parachute onto a separate stage, but that isn't working right now. Uh, we'll find out uh, how to do that in a sec. But for right now, you notice that the default capsule has all three default Kerbals, Jeb, Bill, and Bob, and we're about to see how they react. Well, actually, uh, this is too heavy for this rocket, so I find that out pretty quickly. I, you'll notice that the parachute has also deployed, though we don't really see that. Um, it looks like it's set to not uh, inflate if the, if the downward velocity is zero or higher, and so it was zero, so it just disappeared. Anyway. I try something smaller next. SAS module, one fuel tank, and one rocket. Again, the parachute has already deployed, though uh, we don't see it and it's not having any effect. Launch is good. Now, I don't have my do joystick controls, so I'm using W, A, S, and D, and Q and E, of course. Uh, but there's another problem in that this is old SAS, very old SAS. You can't turn it on pressing T. You have to hold F. And when you hold F, its behavior is a little bit odd. I mean, it's uh, it's not just the old SAS, which if you turn it on, it holds exactly where you're at. Um, it seems to... It has a lot more wiggle to it. So I was a little bit confused about what exactly this SAS was trying to do. And in fact, uh, it wasn't trying to do enough. You can see that we don't have any fuel indicator at all. I have no idea how much fuel is left in the tank at this point. The SAS force is sort of, uh, well, I, I don't know what to make of it. It's somewhat overlapping the icon right now. But our Kerbals are reacting, and uh, Jeb continues to react uh, enthusiastically, even as the rocket seems to go all over the place and run out of fuel. Apoapsis is around 11 kilometers. We don't have a parachute, so we're going to find out exactly what happens when you don't have a parachute in this. Atmosphere felt uh, 
felt a lot like the default uh, atmosphere right now. I don't know if they've changed the atmosphere parameters much. I'd say that uh, approaching this point in the atmosphere without a parachute, uh, I would expect a similar velocity here. Now the, the texture on the sea is very nice, but unfortunately um, it's basically hard as a rock. It, there's no depth to it, it's just a surface. Anyway, uh, so unfortunately the three Kerbals were killed in action in my first attempt. That's sort of almost to be expected really. Uh, and of course they are immortal in this version. They don't even go missing in action. So now I discovered that if you add a decoupler, it gives a lot of staging. And so that will help us because I can now drag that one engine, put it there, and voila, now I can control the parachutes properly. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put the, uh, put the decoupler. Uh, you don't have to put it right under the capsule or anything. Uh, anywhere you put a decoupler, it'll give you the ability to add stages. Interesting. So I come up with something like this, three boosters at the bottom. S don't know how powerful those boosters are, so I don't know if this is going to work, if it's going to lift off at all. I throttle up, uh, though if you throttle up all the way, it gives uh, sort of an over-throttle indication. That's, what, that's an interesting thing. So uh, that's what that little slot on the nav ball originally was meant for. So here I light it and uh, clearly it's not going up. I try the over throttle, but I don't even know if the solid boosters throttle. And then this happens. Ooh. So that happened after I ran out of uh, solid fuel and uh, tried to stage to light the liquid fuel. I uh, think about trying again, but decide to abort and instead remove the solid fuel boosters altogether. So now we're trying to launch no solid fuel boosters, just the uh, triple stack you see there. Can this get off the ground? No. Cannot get off the ground initially, but eventually it'll burn enough fuel to get some vertical... There we go. Uh, a little bit of a tilt there. Come on, try and get SAS. There we go. Hold down that F, please. So we're ending up in a very odd trajectory. I try and get myself to 90 degrees, I think, but I don't think I succeed. You can see the pitch and yaw indicator at the bottom right there, and I'm full pitch, full yaw. This is the best I can do. So, tried to get it to 90, but couldn't. Um, holding SAS though, but if I tried to let go of SAS, it'd probably just spin out of control. I'm pretty sure at this point we'll get higher than we have done before, but I'm also sure that we're not going to make it to orbit. Jeb's fine though. Uh, Bill and Bob are both uh, a little bit more nervous. I adjust the staging there. That works in this version. Still uh, 0 0.7.3 here. Pretty impressive what uh, well is already possible, though still lacking certain things. You'll note mission elapsed time doesn't show up. There's a slot for it, but we don't actually have the elapsed time for the mission here. Also, another interesting thing is how uh, how shaky the vertical speed indicator is. Uh, it's never entirely sure what your vertical speed is, and I have no idea how the coding works uh, that leads to that being uncertain at all. It's a curious thing. But anyway, uh, continuing to go up, no idea how much fuel I have left. Now, if I had the mass and thrust, I would be able to calculate the ISP of the engine based on the burn time. All I really need is mass thrust and burn time. I don't need ISP. I, 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 all I need is uh, three of the four. Mass thrust, burn time, ISP. And then I could probably figure out the remaining variable. So, But I don't have any of them. So I have no idea how far this thing can get or anything like that without just uh, randomly experimenting, which is what we're doing here. Now, fortunately, we do have a parachute. But unfortunately, I do not have the decoupler at the bottom of the capsule, so that parachute is going to have to bear the mass of all of this. So there it goes. Deploys uh, under 25 kilometers, as, as it does now, actually. In fact, the uh, altitude parameters for it have not changed. 
though I don't know if in this version it was 500 meters above sea level or 500 meters above surface. Of course, in the more recent versions of the game, it's 500 meters above the surface. But anyway, we're above the sea, so can't test that out right now. And you can see it brings our velocity down to 28 meters per second, which is way fast. That is, that's 60 miles an hour. Uh, pow. But Kerbal images are still there, no killed in action, and the Kerbals and the SAS unit, amazingly enough, survive. It's a very heavy SAS unit, by the way, as we'll eventually find out once they add numbers. Okay, so in flight, and uh, there you go. Uh, five minute uh, mission, achieved 24 kilometers, and I'm not too sure about the 22.2 G's there. All right, on to version 0 0.8. Let's see what improvements they have made in the game here. So first thing, uh, obviously no settings and, uh, and the actual base looks about the same. So vehicle assembly building looks the same, except we start off with a tutorial now. They have added a tutorial. It is a very basic tutorial that tells you that you can attach things to other things. And so I do so and click next and quickly realized that this tutorial is going to be tedious so I just skip it. Okay, let's continue on to other things. Uh, taking a look at the parts, nothing new. Nothing new at all in terms of the parts. And so I construct a new rocket and no symmetry here. So you can see that I have to put it on individually and uh, no numbers so I'm just going to it is basically 0 0.7.3 uh, there's very little change except I can name the vessel now yep I don't think I was able to name the vessel in 0.7.3 and we're gonna have a full featured rocket I have some experience now about how long the rocket stages last and about how high they can go so I'm building something a little bit more complicated. No struts, you note. Uh, struts are not in the game just yet. There is a, also a flight training tutorial here, but uh, it just tells you WASD, QE, and and that sort of thing. So nothing uh, spectacular. I'm holding down the SAS F key vigorously, and six solid rocket boosters decide where they want to go all on their own. <laughs> we end up going for a, for a polar orbit basically because I have no ability to change that idea. Um, the Kerbals have the same reactions. We do have mission elapsed time now, you notice that. Uh, now we have mission elapsed time. First separation goes well, uh, though, uh, though we seem to turn a bit. I try to get that right. And we continue. Oh, another improvement. Notice that we now have fuel indicators. So I know how long these stages are going to last. So that was that's a huge thing. The fuel tanks are displayed separately, as you can see, which they end up being for quite a while in KSP. So up we go. And I'm going to uh, show as much of these actual launches as possible because they're sort of the interesting thing. You can see the landscape there, the primordial KSP landscape, very, very, very Jurassic in a way, uh, the colors. Uh, it's the image of the jungle, sort of very vivid green kind of thing. So, uh, passing the first successful flight here, and we'll see whether we set a new record. We should set a new record. I mean, uh, 24 kilometers should be a breeze. But we're already on to the final stage here. Separate, please. I'm trying to get my orientation right, I think. But, yep, separation is good. And as with all these last stages, even in the... In the current game, uh, these things can be serious stuff in terms of Delta V. The mass of the capsule must be tiny. 
It's probably the same mass as the current basic Mark I capsule, about a ton, right? But it fit, fits three Kerbals, so that's sort of interesting. Okay, we've set the new altitude record. Still continuing, half of the fuel is stage left. Going very fast. Can we make orbit? Or can we at least go to space? That that would be a first thing. Okay, uh, let, let, let's go for reasonable, reasonable goals here. Let's get to space first. Uh, there is no map view. There is no time warp. There is no, of course, uh, larger resource screen, but that's not that important. But, uh, so... So yeah, here I go, coasting upward. Can't go to map screen to figure out what my apoapsis is. And the speed is uh, definitely suggesting that we're going to get to space. Space being defined by 70 kilometers, and there it is. I don't know if the if space was actually defined as 70 kilometers in this version. I don't know if space was defined at all in this version. There's no music that cuts in uh, when you reach space. But uh, there's our apoapsis, 79 kilometers. And uh, no music at all, but uh, we did make it to what would be considered space in the current game. Now, let's see if we can bring it down properly. Coming below 30 kilometers, we definitely feel the drag of the atmosphere. Separate the rest of the stuff, so now that we, we'll be safe with the parachute, hopefully. I trust that this parachute is actually meant for this capsule, in which case it will actually survive once it touches the ground. Coming in uh, reasonably quick. The Kerbals are reacting the way they, they seem to always do. And as we get closer to the ground, what altitude does it open at? 500 meters on the dot. So does that mean that the ground is at zero sea level? Or does that mean we better not aim for any land that is above 500 meters? A little bit of suspense. We're at 12 meters per second. That's very fast. And, well, it survives, sort of. It's 120 meters, the altitude. So, definitely do not want to try and land on anything above 500 meters. Have to watch out for those mountains. And also, the, the terrain is a little bit glitchy. We can see that uh, uh, some rounding going on here. Definitely some rounding. But, successful flight in terms of getting us to space. We got that 79 kilometer, but uh, interesting, interesting on the G-force endured 29.6 Gs, huh? Okay, on to 0 0.8.5. I decide to go with this version because logically, if it went to 0 0.8.5, there must have been some improvement between 0 0.8 and 0 0.8.5, and so I want to see what that was. Oh, just for uh, information, I started playing KSP in 0 0.18, so that's where I came in. So this is all very, very alien to me. Now, uh, you might already notice some differences, but the one that I noticed first is the fact that once you separate things from the main stack, now they do not immediately disappear. And when I discover that is when I figure out that I've got no SAS unit up there and SAS units are the difference between life and death in these early versions of the game so you need to slip as many in as possible so when do I figure that out about now and I take that off and I expect it to disappear you see that because that's what it did in previous versions but it doesn't disappear this time hangs out so I can reattach it big improvement in terms of the build po uh, process but there is an even bigger improvement and you might have noticed it already that there is a symmetry indicator up there and now's the question do I notice that there is symmetry in this version of the game I've put the tricoupler on how am I gonna attach things to it one at a time <laughs> one at a time so yes I I build this without using the symmetry at all unfortunately uh, but uh, here we go, uh, trying this again. Wannabe Orbiter 1. I've got lots of SAS units all over the place. I've put, uh, we've got that 
tutorial thing up there, but I've got uh, three boosters on the outboard and uh, three liquid fuel engines on the center. Off it goes. Very Kerbal need of struts here, but struts do not exist yet. Holding steady though, and it's doing quite well. I think improvements have been made to the SAS. SAS has definitely been improved at this point, so at least I felt so. Okay, so a few boosters off and separate. Separation is good. Okay, continuing on, you can see fuel halfway through on the third stage, uh, the first stage, the, the bomb stage of three. Flying quite nicely, actually. So, uh, there have been wobbly rockets, but uh, Primordial Kerbal is uh, capable of not being so wobbly. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, maybe I spoke too soon. Hold that SAS. Okay, separate. And second stage. Second stage. There we go. Pretty steady though. I think this is much better control than on previous versions. Still no joystick control by the way. I suppose I might as well say, until now, I have never played KSP launching a rocket without joystick control. I've used joystick control on every launch in KSP thus far until this episode. Okay, past uh, two minute mark and 11 kilometers. Still having a little bit of trouble uh, controlling it. Uh, not as bad as the previous launches, but still can't quite get it to the 90 degree mark there. I am trying, but you can see yaw and pitch uh, full off and uh, letting go of SAS, not the safest thing to do. Okay, separation, orientation, oh, I spin out. The atmosphere is still having some effect and SAS is tough to work with in this, but uh, still I eventually think I get it steady, sort of, come on, you can do it, get back to the prograde vector, there we go. Wow. All over the place. So, the question now is whether this mission will beat the altitude record of the previous mission and perhaps get into orbit. We seem to be going faster. Without a map or any indication of my apoapsis, it's tough to say when I can shut down the engine and just coast. Uh, so, whether I can coast to apoapsis, I have no clue. So I just have to keep burning until, until I'm uh, definitively going to be reaching space. And unfortunately, in this case, that means just burning out all my fuel. Okay, well, uh, coasting upward, uh, we definitely have enough momentum to get to space here. There we go. Passing 87 kilometers at apoapsis. Traveling quite far downrange. At this point, we can be confident of a safe return for our Kerbals. And so, just following them down, we get separation of the final stage. And then after that, of course, deployment of the parachute. And really the only uh, suspense factor is whether we're going to end up over land that is higher than 500 meters. That would be bad. Oh, interesting comment about the... Uh, you notice that there's a heavy wind effect as it uh, descends. That, that was an interesting feature. And interesting glitching of the parachute. Though the capsule does actually touch the ground this time. That's interesting. So... After 13 minutes, it uh, lands safely on its side, and we can end flight and see 
75.6 G's. 75.6 G's. I don't think it could have possibly ever gotten up to that, but that's what it says. I don't know how it reads G-forces at all. Okay, next thing. Point nine. Point nine is the is the big big one as far as uh, upgrades are concerned. We have settings, so I can turn down the volume. Now, normally when I record KSP just for a benchmark, I turn down the volumes to five percent, but I want to be careful not to create too huge a jump between the previous versions and this version in terms of the volume, because otherwise I'd have trouble normalizing them and making the sound seem right in this video. SAS toggle, that's a huge thing. And of course, remappable keys is a huge thing, but SAS toggle, that is going to make controlling this a whole lot easier. In fact, uh, its control is going to be more or less the same as what it was through 0.18. I think they introduced a new SAS in 0 0.20. Anyway, I just uh, moved the cursor over one of the more important things, struts. We have struts now. And we have numbers. We have lots of numbers. So now I'm 100% confident that I can get to orbit. Uh, even without a map. Uh, I don't know if we have a map just yet, but first thing I need to do is test burn time and whether these numbers match what we are used to in regular KSP. What is the unit for the thrust and the mass in this version? Now, if the units are the same in current KSP, then this rocket will take off. So let's find out. No, they're not. So, uh, so the units are different. Very important to know. And so now I do a fire test, stack fire test, to see how long it takes for this thing to get above 1G of acceleration. And it turns out it is just after the beginning of the second to last tank. So this rocket can carry two tanks of fuel. And uh, the reason it didn't immediately start up with uh, the second uh, the second to last tank is because it was carrying the mass of the two empty tanks. So now I know something, and I can calculate pretty much everything else from that. I can calculate the ISP of this engine, everything. Uh, not in normal units, not in metric units, uh, not in imperial units for that matter, but I can calculate it in sort of a makeshift Kerbal unit system. So, now I know what I need to know. But we still try and get these scribbles up to the highest point possible. At this point, I'm not worried at all about uh, their demise. I'm pretty sure I can uh, bring them back safely. And we are well controlled with the new SAS. And so I can uh, get them above water so I'm not risking hitting mountains that might be higher than 500 meters, for instance. So the thing about the old form of SES prior to point two zero is that you just turn it off whenever you want to maneuver and turn it back on so it can hold you steady. And that's basically how it worked. It's not like the adaptive SAS that we have right now. Everything seems a little bit more spick and span. The, the vertical velocity indicator is a little bit uh, cleaner. In fact, that's, that's the way it looks right now. This is on its last tank now, so we're not expecting it to go too much higher here. Basically, I'm showing you every single launch that I did in these versions. I did not do any launches that I have not shown. So, so you can see my progress, such as it is. Um, and there we go. That's the end of that stage. And now it's just a matter of recovering the Kerbals. They're not going to space today. They're just coming right back down. But the test was successful. Told me what I needed to know. And we will be able to build an orbital rocket, which is all you can do in this uh, version, by the way. Um, there is no moon, there are no planets, so getting to orbit is the thing. Heavy atmosphere sound and successful deployment of the parachute. 12.7 meters per second, they didn't make the parachute any stronger. And, uh, and that's, that's how splashdown happens. 
Okay, back to the VAB. I now discover symmetry, of course. So, uh, and I have to make all the calculations that I mentioned to, and I decide to make a fairly overpowered rocket. In fact, the rocket I end up making might have been able to transfer to the moon if the moon actually existed. But uh, what I wanted to do was make sure that I could retro burn and get back down properly. And so, lots of SAS units. And this time I'm confident, so I'm going to call it Orbiter 1. Got six boosters this time. Didn't strictly need them. Um, but hey, why not? One thing I didn't have on this rocket was struts. <laughs> Imagine forgetting those. So here we go. Yeah, they all splay out like that. Remember the struts next time. Okay, here we go. Uh, you can see the SAS force trying its best to keep things steady. Not doing a bad job. And while Bob is uh, completely scared out of his wits, Bill is actually a little bit more neutral about it. So, perhaps a little bit more confidence. Okay, boosters are away. And the rocket looks steady. The rocket looks very steady. We're uh, losing some velocity, but that's fine. Honestly, if you asked me why I put those three fins on the second stage, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I have no idea whether they're functional at all. Uh, I do know that they show up in the staging, which is sort of weird. Uh, I have no idea what they do, whether they actually help stability at all. Uh, they don't seem to turn, I don't think. I haven't noticed them turn. But uh, perhaps they're like aerodynamic strakes, in which case they can keep things stable. Wasn't too sure about that. Everybody's excited now. Jeb, Bill, and Bomb are all happy. I think that's the first time in this that I've seen them like that. Maybe, maybe not. This is definitely the first time I actually noticed them all happy. The turn is somewhat complicated by roll. And this is where being used to a joystick instead of a keyboard is complicated because I'm used to being able to control roll, yaw, and pitch with uh, basically a single movement of my hand and instead uh, trying to uh, find buttons to press and all that is a bit disorienting but it's a reasonably controlled pitch maneuver here give it uh, plus or minus 10 degrees on the on the heading Okay, second stage out. And third stage, the all-powerful third stage, which we now know can handle two fuel tanks. Up to this point, all my launches have given it one fuel tank, but that was actually less than it could do. And there we go. Approaching what I think is, and it looks like Kerbin Cur here is about the same size. I wasn't sure, by the way, that Kerbin was the same size as it is now or has the same gravity that it has now. But it seemed like it, so I was approaching what I thought was uh, good velocity, slowed down a bit. Also, SAS has a lot more trouble controlling it as you pile on the G-forces. So, pseudo-coasting here, taking a look around. Now, without time warp and without a map, I have no idea whether I actually make orbit. So I began thinking about plans about how to verify that conclusively. And, uh, of course, you have to go around. Um, there's no other way of doing it. But, but also, I wanted to make sure that I actually made orbit before I checked by going to the other side and suddenly finding out that my periapsis was in the atmosphere. So, need to make sure... And what I do is I wait till the vertical velocity indicator starts to dip down and I very judiciously add some thrust to keep it up. So what's going to happen is um, 138 kilometers or so is going to be my periapsis. And I'm going to boost my apoapsis on the other side of the planet higher than that. And I can do that by just making sure that the vertical velocity indicator uh, does not go negative. 
So you can see here, it goes negative, add a little bit of thrust. And ultimately, I end up at uh, 138,500, and this last little bit of thrust gets me positive, and I stay positive after that. So uh, that's uh, my periapsis 15 minutes into the mission, according to mission elapsed time, and I see the sun for the first time, amazingly enough. Also, there's clearly a skybox of some sort. You can see stars in the background. I didn't really notice that in previous versions before point 0.9. Okay, and in fact, uh, Milky Way there. We continue coasting up past uh, 146 onto the nighttime side of the planet. And then here is my real lap lapse. It's 167 kilometers on the opposite side of the planet after 33 minutes. No time warp, I just let the game run. And uh, I, I know from playing KSP that uh, the orbit is about 30 minutes, so I came back after the appropriate amount of time to see this. And uh, I was confident that this confirmed an orbit, so I began retro burn. Now, somewhat into the very slow retro burn, I saw a continent that looked familiar. I saw a somewhat Africa-shaped continent that uh, seemed to be the same as the continent in KSP that we know and love today. I had no map, so I wasn't sure that this was in fact our home continent, but note the mountain range that uh, bedevils my space planes, uh, because for some reason every time I pass over those on my way back to KSC, the plane flips out. Uh, usually because of center mass issues, so I'm not blaming the mountains per se, but they're sort of a symbol of my failure. But, uh, yep, so I see that and I start burning with the intention of landing as close to the KSC as possible. We have plenty of fuel, like I said, um, close, close to what we would need to transfer to the moon. So, I, even though we're very uh, near to the KSC at this point and very high, I'm reasonably sure I can burn off a lot of my velocity and so I continue to do that. The Kerbals, uh, Jeb is looking as he always looks. Bill is uh, pensive, I would describe him, since he's lacking a mouth entirely. Uh, Bob is always scared. Well, except for that one time when everybody was happy. So here we go, passing over the mountains, very high, of course. And I dumped the rest of the fuel. We're not even in the atmosphere yet, so... Definitely not going to get too much drag out of that in terms of horizontal velocity. Most of the drag we're going to get is from vertical velocity. And off goes the third stage. And you can see the KSC from here. It's a very differently rendered patch there. You see the terrain sort of changing below it as we get through levels of detail and parachute deployment 40 minutes into the mission okay descending down parachute deployment successful 42 minutes all of our kerbals are placid and there you have it, orbit in point 0.9, in KSP version point 0.9. I don't know when I'm going to get to the subsequent versions of KSP. Obviously, the goal would be to get to the mission, uh, get to the moon in uh, version point 0.12, I think the moon was at. I guess that would be the next video in th this sort of thing. But yeah, I was definitely uh, happy being able to make orbit. 65.5 Gs somehow. Um, but yeah. Uh, so thank you for watching this uh, 2000 subscriber special. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.